Hey guys, today's video is a haul of discontinued or hard to find fragrances. This is a collective haul. I didn't go out and buy all of these at once. This is the epitome of my toxic trait that I said of falling for or hunting down discontinued fragrances. And like I said, since I'm working on my toxic traits, I'm trying not to buy any more discontinued fragrances or even fall for them. Like fall into the trap of hunting them down and finding them for a decent price. I understand some of these are easier to find in different countries and actually some of them have now become more easily available. They were not when I was looking for them. So the first one is Robert Cavalli's Gemma de Paradiso. I did have to wait about six months. Like I lusted over this thing for about six months before I found before I found it here in the US for a decent price. I don't know if it's available now, but I will try to link where you guys can buy these if I can find them or where I bought them if I can find that as well. I know I do a pretty bad job at linking things, but this is going to be my first attempt at listing all of these fragrances for you guys. I heard that this smelled like Carolina Herrera's Good Girl, but better, but actually good. And I'm not a huge fan of that one. It has this weird sharp, I think iso -E super, but it's just not very well blended in my opinion. It's just, it doesn't do it for me. So this is supposed to be a better version of that. This is a tester bottle, I think. Is it? I'm assuming, I mean, the box doesn't look very interesting. I don't know, I think it is though. Oh my gosh, these are literally gorgeous. I didn't look up the notes for this, at least not recently. And this is a very shampoo-y, clean scent with something like beautiful in the background, like something like a little bit gourmand and definitely some florals in here. But it's a beautiful blend of all of those things. It's a little bit soapy, shampoo-y kind of vibe, mixed with florals, mixed with something deeper and a little bit heavier at the bottom, I mean at the base. There's something a little bit like intoxicating about this. I think there might be a tiny bit of either Ambroxan or iso -E Super, but just like the tiniest bit done in the best way possible. Like that's how you're supposed to do it. Your fragrance are not supposed to be overtaken by any one particular note. Especially not those chemically notes. This smells like the most beautiful springtime scent. Oh my gosh, this is literally beautiful. I can smell all of the things, but yet they're all so well blended that I can, that I have to like really try to dissect it to pick things up. And I'm not getting too much Carolina Herrera vibes. Maybe just like 60-70%, but it definitely has its own vibe going on. So anyways, this was so far like Pretty much a love at first sniff. This is really, really good. It's more on the floral freshy side though, so if that's your vibe and you find this for a good deal, it's not bad at all. But don't let me talk you into buying things, especially not all these discontinued things. I was recently talking to another lovely YouTuber and we were just discussing how, you know, it's really, it's really up to people and their own discretion on how they want to spend their money and creators and influencers should not be held accountable. I think that, you know, we're just here to share our journey, not necessarily to sell you anything. I mean, I'm always telling you guys that I'm not here to sell you anything. So keep that in mind, especially throughout this video. Don't let this video give you FOMO. Okay, let's move on. Next is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Classique something something. Oh no, I forgot the name. I will definitely post the name, post the link, all that. I got you guys. This one time. So this is that beautiful fragrance. It's supposed to be like an orange blossom, vanilla-y type of scent. So this is a floral with a very vanilla-y type of base. And I'm getting that soapy orange blossom along with the soapy jasmine. I lusted after this before I realized that I had a huge issue with soapy jasmine, like the kind that's found in Alien. This also has a little bit of aldehydes, just a little bit, where they don't take over or smell too vintagey or anything. It smells like a beautiful, beautiful, well-blended fragrance, but in a lot of ways, it doesn't smell like me, like something that I want to particularly smell like. 
I think that this would smell amazing on someone else. And I think it's mainly because of the jasmine and the aldehydes. I just, I don't really feel any connection to it. It doesn't feel like my vibe whatsoever. So I will play with this a little bit more, but this might be on the chopping block. I can definitely appreciate the quality, the deliciousness of it. Like I can absolutely appreciate it. It just doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't vibe with me. I can't see myself falling in love with this or really wearing it I just I can't do it so as beautiful as it is and as much as I can appreciate it this might be on the chopping block so let's just move on so next we have stash by Sarah Jessica Parker I ended up ordering this from Canada because I just could not hold my horses like I completely ran out of patience and now it's available here for a super affordable price so I just paid all that money for nothing but it is what it is it wasn't crazy expensive, but it was like $15 to ship, so that's whack. I could have just waited another three months and it would have came. This was just like super, super hyped up. And again, like I'm not even huge into woody perfumes, but the pistachio in here, there was supposed to be pistachio along with woodiness, so I, I convinced myself that I needed this at a time when my thought process was a little bit different. I think I'm like getting it together now a little bit. I think I'm a little bit better, but here we are. So let's just get into it. This bottle is pretty freaking gorgeous. I love it. It's very interesting. This is a piece of cloth that's just glued on there sideways. I love the little ribbon it looks very very bougie for the scent initially i got i got some sandalwood then i got like a wet wood kind of vibe and then i'm getting some cedar i don't know if it's the cedar or something kind of piney and earthy i mean it smells like you're going to your backyard this is literally the visual that i'm getting like you're going to your backyard and there's a little bit of a forest beyond your backyard and you're out there to build a deck with cedar <laughs> because it's very very woody woody perfumes are just not my thing and i should have known but but i still kind of like it and i still kind of want to play with it this might be like the this might be the gateway into woody perfumes i don't understand the appeal of woody perfumes i'm actually sometimes surprised that so many beautiful ladies are out here smelling like a freshly made wood bench and they like that i'm a little bit like wow i, I wouldn't imagine it just, to me, it doesn't go. Like, when I see, I mean, I'm not judging because you can smell like whatever you want. You can walk around smelling like a barnyard if that's your vibe. But in my head, when I see these, like, really dressed up fancy ladies, I never I never would picture them to smell so woody. I would picture them smelling, like, sweet or very feminine, even floral. Probably mostly, like, bougie florals, maybe some tuberose, something like that. Maybe even aldehydes. But woody perfumes, I just, it doesn't doesn't click in my brain but I'm not judging I'm just stereotyping <laughs> I'm just scenting the image that I have of these bougie ladies it's a really beautiful bottle though definitely smells unisex maybe leaning a little bit masculine but I, I don't mind that it's not the masculine vibes that I mind it's more just like smelling like wood and cedar and like I just left the wood section at Home Depot, you know? I don't even know if I described this fragrance or if I just sat here and talked crap, so we'll see how the editing goes. Okay, so this was kind of a fail, but honestly, I can work with this even more than I can work with that soapy jasmine in the John Paul Gaultier one, so I might just keep this around to play with it a little bit more, or I might sell it. Let's just move on. Here I was thinking that I was going to give you guys FOMO. I think instead I'm like talking you out of some of these perfumes, okay? So you're welcome. So anyways, the next one is Her Intense. I don't know why. I got a little bit obsessed with this one as soon as it got discontinued because it wasn't at the, it wasn't in the gray market yet. Once it started being discontinued, it like left department stores and then I started to get like a little bit like my FOMO really started to kick in. 
that I ended up paying full price for it. Just full price at Nordstrom for absolutely no reason. And then it hit the gray market, of course, at a discounted price. So anyways, here we are. Let's just get into it. I've learned a lot, you know, all these purchases have definitely been learning lessons. Expensive learning lessons, but lessons nonetheless. This is Burberry Her Intense. I love the regular Burberry Her, but I think I like this one more. I have smelled it before. Oh my gosh, this bottle is so cute. I don't know why it's so cute. And this smells so incredibly delicious. And kind of basic and it's just like a fruity a little bit like creamy baccarat rouge type of dna and i just think to myself if i'm so basic why am i why am i out here like trying to get into niche trying to buy all these like discontinued weird random perfumes i'm just basic and i need to accept it mm, i love this so much this is just everything i want right now i almost wish i didn't love this dna so much one because it's discontinued but two because it's nothing new and amazing or exciting. And I'm okay with that though. This is delicious. Honestly, this is so much better than the new Elixir one. There's something just off about that one. In the initial spray, it is like creamy and a little bit more, maybe a tiny, the tiniest bit like milky or something. But it's just kind of odd. It's almost, I don't know. There's something a little bit odd in there. I think this one's way better. There's something so friendly and fruity about this one and just simple. So this one is a good one. This one is now number one, and then Gemma de Paradiso is number two, but I still like both of them. Mm. This one's definitely a win. And see, the win was the one that I had already smelled, so that should teach me something, right? Okay, let's move on. Next is Nirvana Bourbon by Elizabeth James. This is also a tester bottle, and this just came like this with no box. What is this? Oh shoot, it's chipped. I don't know if I chipped it or if it was already chipped, but I could have chipped it because it's been sitting in a box that I've been moving around and I moved all my fragrances around. So that could have been me. I think it's still good though. Yeah, the perfume's all the way up here and the chip is down here. So there's a good, a good space between that when it's just glass. I think I'll be okay. Mm. And the scent of this, just like in the first spray, initially, it just gives me a little bit vibes to Mercedes Black, Mercedes Club Black, or something like that. And it's like a tobacco -y vanilla. And it's simple, but it's also very sweet, and that just makes it a little bit addictive and so yummy. This is a beautiful, like, cozy beginning of winter fragrance. It's almost simple. And a little bit basic because it just smells like tobacco-y vanilla with a little bit of something sweet and sparkling. Maybe a little bit of woodiness in the base. There's a little bit of a touch of something masculine in here, but I kind of like that too. It almost smells like a like a handsome older gentleman's sweater if he smelled really good and he also smoked some tobacco. And he was wearing like a sweet manly perfume. I mean cologne. Anyways, this smells like a sexy older gentleman, like a silver fox, <laughs> and I like it. I mean, my husband is a silver fox, so I guess I do like silver foxes. <laughs> Anyways, so this one's a win. I like it. It's really good. Let's move on. Okay, so this is the second to the last one. I'm almost done, and I saved the best one for last, of course. So this is Valentina Pink by Valentino. And I heard a lot of good things about this, especially because I love berries and I heard it was a delicious berry perfume. I am a little bit scared of the musk. Some people said that it goes a little musky and I have issues with musk. So I've never smelled this. So let's see what it smells like. This comes with like a protective lid for traveling. So that's kind of neat. So this is giving me like juicy berries, but it's also giving me something very like tart and a little bit soapy and clean. So far, honestly, like I just think it's good. It's pretty good. I thought it was going to like give me more. I thought it was going to give me something like syrupy. I thought it was going to give me like more berries and just something super juicy. 
I am getting juicy, but I'm also getting just like a young sweet fruity vibe. It's not, it's not almost not serious enough. The dry down of this doesn't really get a lot. It doesn't become anything. It doesn't, I guess it's pretty linear. It doesn't get like dark or more grown. It just stays like a young, fun, juicy berries, very tart, juicy berries. It's like a berry musk. There's something a little bit tart in here that almost gives me like the leaves of the strawberry kind of vibe. So it's like berries and with the stems and everything. And it's not a sweet berry. It's it's ripening, but it's not like super sweet, super ripe yet. So I do really like this. I just also feel like that if I would have smelled it beforehand, I would not have gone out and hunted it down. It's so odd to like be analyzing these perfumes and purchases months down the road when if I would have hauled these maybe when I first got them I probably would have felt completely different about them but ever since changing my mindset to only wanting the perfumes that I love even the purchases I just feel very skeptical about them I think I let go of some of that cognitive dissonance where I just like the perfume because I don't dislike it and it was a blind buy because it was a blind buy that I don't dislike, so that makes me assume that I like it only because I already have it and I already spent the money. Does that make sense? So this is one of those fragrances that I think I would have loved and liked and been so happy with if I would have opened it before. There's a lot more going into the decision to buy and keep a perfume now, so I'm just I'm just judging things a lot harsher now, which which is what I was trying to get at. So I'm I mean I'm achieve, I'm achieving my goals, but <laughs> That might be disappointing to some people sorry if it is so although i like it the muskiness and the little bit of the tart vibe i almost don't know if it's for me this might also be on the chopping block so i don't know i'll have to play with it i could completely change my mind remember these are first impressions if you if you can't handle first impressions if you don't know that first impressions are simply that and that i very well might change my mind literally by the time I finish filming this video. I could completely be head over heels over this perfume. I mean, that happens to you too, you know, whenever you go to the store and you initially smell something and then you spray it on you and then you leave the store only to find out that what you had sprayed is like amazing and you totally want to go back for it. That happens to all of us. So take that for what it is, but this one is on the chopping block for now. I'll definitely be testing these out this week. And then I will be decluttering whatever I need to. It doesn't matter if I just got it because if there's a note in there that bothers me, there's no amount of time that will probably get me to learn to like a note that's on, that's on my list. There's a few things on my list that I don't see myself liking anytime soon that I've never liked, such as really heavy ambers or musks. And I just don't see myself coming around to those. So I don't have to keep it. I don't have to keep it. <laughs> I'm telling myself this. Anyway, so this is okay, but I don't know if it's for me, so we'll see. My favorite is C. Fiore by George Armani. I got this on the Walmart website, guys. Absolutely stunning bottle. This perfume is gorgeous. I love this thing so much. When I first smelled this perfume, it was not a love at first sniff. Not at all. I actually was like, ew, what did I get? Because I got a decant of it. But then I tried it a little bit more and it was so good. Now that I'm in love with Orange Blossom because the Orange Blossom in here is, it's prominent. It's definitely front and center. It's a little bit powdery, a little bit like vanilla maybe in the base. It's just so good. It's such a feminine floral. It smells like femininity. This one's definitely going to be included in my Feminine Vibe perfumes. And it smells like the color. It smells like a light pink vibe because it smells so dainty and feminine. There's nothing that's like overpowering. It's not powerful, but it's, but it's beautiful. It's literally beautiful. I just love this. I love this so much. I almost can't really describe it. It's absolutely stunning. So I got this on the Walmart website, like I said, and I will link the one that I bought down below. I want to say this was right around $100, but I mean, I think it's worth it. It's the full size. If this is one of your absolute favorite perfumes, I think it's worth it, but I don't think this is a safe blind buy. So 
don't say fine by this unless you absolutely love orange blossom the way that i know that this is absolutely authentic is because i have the nose of a hound dog and i have a decant of it and it's the same thing the quality everything is it's just it's the perfume you know when you know a fragrance and you just know when you smell it and if you smell it and it was off you would instantly know that something was off i know this fragrance and it's it's authentic either way buy at your own risk i'm not guaranteeing you anything let's recap shall we this is the order in which i like them love love strong like potentially a love like i'm unsure most likely no i don't think so these are my first impressions remember that if you guys have stuck around thank you thank you because this video has been all over the place and i appreciate you guys i wish that i could be more proper and know the correct way of saying things and not put my foot in my mouth but unfortunately like i told you guys before um embarrassing myself is like my thing this is why i don't drink you know i always tell people that ask me like why don't i drink i don't drink because i don't need alcohol to be embarrassing and ridiculous like i really don't need it i just don't drink for many reasons but that would be one of them is like i don't need alcohol to make a fool out of myself i can't even imagine how much more of a fool i could make myself like there's potential there and i don't necessarily want to explore that potential you know i'm high on life okay if you've smelled some of these let me know what you think let me know what you guys like are they worth it would you make some of the mistakes that i've made will you be learning anything today will you be learning anything from me who has an issue with blind buying anyways thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i'll see you guys in my next video take care bye but i 100 percent know that this is What's the word? Organic? Natural? Real? Original? Not a, What's the word when it's not fake? Legitimate? <laughs> what's the word? Um, the way that I know that this is 100% Oh my gosh, what's the word? Legitimate? Not a knockoff? Authentic! The word is authentic. Okay. It stays way more like on the orange blossom side, which is virtuous. I heard that this smelled like Carolina Herrera. Blah, blah.